Professor Masha Neef, Associate Professor Chemical Senses and Molecular Recognition at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and representative of the GCCR, Global Consortium for Chemosensory Research, will discuss the impact of losing your taste and smell for your food consumption and enjoyment with two-star chefs Christophe Hardike from the Brussels two-Michelin star Bonbon in Belgium and Pascal Barbeau from two-Michelin star Lastrance in Paris, France. Good evening. May I call you Masha? We have prepared this. <laughs> you have prepared this before, so we know each other. And Pascal. Bonsoir. Hi, Good Pascal. Evening. Yeah. Bonsoir, Pascal. So, um, Professor, um, what uh, I would like to that the people know is what you are usually doing before doing GCCR. So, you are specialist in? So, we studied taste. Um, we have uh, developed the bitter DP. It's a database of bitter compounds. Uh, we have the bitter predict, which is a machine learning tool for predicting bitter taste based on chemical structure of the molecule. Um, and we also uh, predict potential novel sweeteners based on chemical structure and comp compatibility with the receptors for sweet taste. Okay. So... How have you been involved in GCCR? Could you explain what is GCCR and how have you been yourself involved in this? So, um, actually, what happened in March uh, when the uh, reports about people losing taste and smell starting to, started to come out, um, I was uh, on Twitter and some other colleagues and myself have started talking about this issue that seems to be very pronounced in COVID-19, this issue of smell and taste problems. And via Twitter, we um, decided to, to start a group of people who would study this. Um, and, and we called it the GCCR, the Global uh, Chemosensory uh, Research. And um, basically, that's how it started. Uh, so from the leadership team to which I belong, we uh, expanded. And now the GCCR includes many people, scientists, but also patient advocates, uh, clinicians, many people studying this um, topic. Yeah. And so your, the, the GCCR database is based on the testimony from people having lost the, the, the taste or just experiencing COVID? Uh, no. So actually, we have several questionnaires that we have developed. Um, and um, in fact, um, we have now almost 50,000 of people who, who have responded to the questionnaires uh, in many languages, over 30 languages, of course, including French and um, um, English and many different languages. Um, uh, but um, we were originally, actually, we would, did not mean to focus only on COVID. We were interested in um, respiratory diseases more generally and what happens during these diseases so we could compare COVID to other diseases. However, what happened was that actually the majority of people who so far uh, answered our questionnaires and whose resp uh, responses we have um, analyzed uh, there is a majority of COVID-19 patients just because, you know, the, the, the disease is spreading so fast. And so we have more people um, with uh, COVID-19 among the responders than, than others. But actually, it, it is uh, also people who just experience something that they don't know exactly what it is, still can answer the questionnaire. The questionnaire is still active. If you go to GCCR, I put it uh, um, as a background, you can still answer the questionnaires. And there are additional questionnaires and additional mm -hmm. tools that the GCCR is developing. So we, we are active, we are continuing to explore, and also now we are looking as a follow-up to see what happened to people who already uh, had a change in taste and smell, how fast or slow it can recover. Okay, thank you. So um, why we have these two chefs uh, um, on board is first because for you know people from this business, losing taste and uh, losing all these sen captures and, and, and uh, sensors is very, very uh, 
perturbing. It's not only perturbing, but it's, you know, uh, um, today we had a chef in the morning who lost for 10 days. Now he says it's okay. Christophe will explain his own story. We have um, one sh woman chef who was supposed to come today and she's unable to, to move and to travel and she lost the, the taste from the, the two weeks now. So I would like to ask to Christophe what happens to you and then you can comment maybe scientifically what, what happened. What happened to you when, that's, when it starts? So, um, yes, I've been touched by, by the COVID-19 uh, uh, five weeks ago and I lost my, uh, my taste and my smell for approximately uh, 10 days. And uh, when I s I'm starting to recover, recovering my, my taste, uh, my, my smell doesn't come, but uh, parosmia appeared. So I will give you two examples uh, of my parosmia. I was uh, eating a piece of cheese with black pepper on it. I told you already, Macha. And uh, I, was, uh, feel I, I felt the, the, the fishy flavor. For example, or I was drinking a glass of uh, wine and I, uh, I felt uh, uh, gasoline, fuel, fuel fever. So it was uh, very confused for me because especially when you are in the food industry, you are a chef and you have to, uh, to find uh, the way how to cook with it and how to recover it. So I had a lot of uh, exchange with Pascal. Uh, Three, I think, this week, huh, Pascal, and it was very yeah. interesting. So, um, so now maybe you go on what you have done with Pascal. Yes. And then we, we come back. Yes, so, uh, please. Because explain yes. what. And we, we decide, we, we, we speak a bit, we chat together, and uh, uh, we explore different possibilities to uh, cook with the COVID or uh, how, how to boost your uh, sense hey, exactly. for the next, uh, next uh, few. And the exercise, what to do when you lost your. your, your Absolutely. So, so well, I think, f firstly, it's important for uh, each people to clarify, to redefine the, the, uh, all the, the five flavors uh, of, the, of the malt. And uh, the first one is um, bitterness. And uh, I, for me, bitterness is bitter. It's uh, bajan beer, uh, bajan and dives, uh, it's grapefruit, uh, citrus, and things like that, or uh, Italian aperitif. Um, the, the, the sweetness is honey for me, for myself, and, and uh, remind me that in my, in my mind. And uh, also uh, saltiness, it's uh, uh, salted capers. Um, uh, acidity, it's uh, lemon juice with water. And umami flavor, it's, uh, for example, a sun-dried tomato or a beautiful uh, Parmesan cheese fondue, as you, as you do. Um, um, also, uh, different kind of uh, dashi, like uh, shiitake dashi, uh, and it's important to uh, redefine all these flavor. So, could we give the word to Pascal? To yes, say what, certainly. Or you react to your? Yeah, but but I, I will continue because we we decide to do a few exercise, okay, like so a homework. Every day we decide to do a few homework at home, and um, for example, it's nice to to uh, activate your, your nose, your smell. And uh, example, the, the citrus, it's nice to, to, to play with the essential, essential oil. It's nice to smell this kind of product because uh, citrus are so uh, powerful with uh, essential oil. Also, we got, I got this in my, in my kitchen and I smell. What is that? It's a uh, uh, natural essential oil from a friend of us. Uh, Laurent so le, to, to ex um, uh, Pascal, would you explain what is this uh, essential oil, please? Yes, uh, uh, this is the essential oil. This is a friend of us. This is a, uh, the company Baume des Anges. Uh, so this guy is a farmer. He's an engineer and a farmer. And he's growing himself all of the plants. For example, he selects a special brand, breed of, uh, of uh, lavender, of mint. Then he harvests the, the herbs when they are the top of the top. Uh, no water in the morning, you know, make sure before, before the, it's, uh, it's in the perfect condition, or it can have us only the flowers or the parsley, they, he, then he's going to make uh, his own oil from the parsley flower, then he's going to make the oil in a sous vide uh, special machine with a low temperature. So this is means he takes all of the good molecules of the perfume. This guy is working with many, some, I don't want to mention some name, some good name, but it's all the, the best uh, uh, perfume name uh, branding. 
So this guy is the supplier for them, for those people. Yes. And I'm, uh, so the, I'm sorry, Pascal. The quality, no, no. quality is really good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm doing also in the kitchen, I got all my jars uh, of uh, spices and I put my nose in, like this and I try to, to, to smell it and to uh, redefine uh, the, the, the flavor of each element, of each ingredient. So I do that with uh, coffee, pepper, crushed pepper or something like this, very nice to do. It's uh, crush the fresh herbs and drinking with... Uh, uh, sparkling water and uh, carbonic uh, bubbles, carbonic gas bubbles takes the essential oil. It's very nice to do. It's uh, very flavoring, a lot of aromas. Okay. Pascal, what would you recommend? What, or what, what is your vision of uh, uh, this COVID issue, losing the taste and so on? And what, what? I, I totally agree with uh, Christophe. So ex every day, every day, you have to do some exercise. So uh, then I have one question to ask to, to Masha because I was uh, reading a, a special uh, doctor. Then he was saying, for an example, for people who lose the smell, uh, for an example, we're talking about the uh, lavender essential oil. So first of all, you have to mention the name. You have to read the name to, 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 the, to the brand. You have to say lavender. Then you have to read the name. Then after you have to smell means the most uh, uh, information have to go to the system. So is that true, uh, Masha? So it makes sense. So first of all, I have to say that um, smell training is something that people have been doing uh, for before COVID. So for a post-viral smell loss. Um, and um, there are works showing that it can help. Oh, definitely it cannot hurt. Uh, so smell training, um, I'm not... I'm not sure that I know the work that you all are discussing, uh, but uh, in fact, because we need to relearn again something. So actually it does make sense that you make the connection between um, the name or the, what you see and the smell and repeat that again and again. But um, what I would also like to, to suggest, because uh, we know that almost... Um, um, 60-70% of COVID-19 patients lose, lose their uh, taste and smell. And uh, now in um, work we're doing in Israel uh, on follow-up of uh, such patients, we know that about 10% of these people do not um, gain back uh, the, the senses during many, many weeks, even months. Um, so um, I think it would be really interesting to work with chefs together uh, and the scientific community and to, uh, because, you know, you asked me a question if that works, but actually we need to, to gain evidence and to, uh, to gather more data and to see what, which the, are the protocols that are most effective uh, and can really help, y yes or no, we need to see in, in ex um, accelerating the return of the census. So um, I want to take this opportunity to invite um, um, sommeliers and chefs and uh, yourself to be in contact with GCCR and we can think maybe together about uh, further steps and what can be studied in terms of, you know, what, what are the best practices of training back your uh, taste and smell senses. Yeah, right. So Jean-Pierre, I, I want to, to uh, answer you. So first of all, I think we have, uh, as uh, Christophe and Masha mentioned, we have some exercise that we know it works, you know, for the smell. Then as a chef, uh, we have a uh, uh, this is the opportunity to, to work more on the other senses, uh, like the, the sight, you know, the view. The visual is really important. The noise in the kitchen, this is really important. And the touch. The, when we use the hand in the kitchen, this is something really important. Um, since many years, we practice twice every day, lunch and dinner. So we have to use this experience. We have to, to use our memory we have to trust ourselves, our chef, as a chef. You know, this is something really important because we always talking about the dictionary and our library of uh, aroma and flavors. You know, we all of us we have the Madeleine de Proust. We have to use our basic creation. Uh, those creation make our own identity. So we have to keep this identity and maybe go further. You know, this is really important uh, to use all the like Christophe do, I do, we use our condiment or citrus, you know, uh, the black curry paste. I like to use this one. It's a mix of uh, 
licorice, black olive, and coffee. So this is really strong flavors. Uh, the seaweed butter, so all of this space, all of condiment, make my own identity, like the pepper oil of uh, Christophe, this is his own identity. So we have to, to focus more on that. And when I mentioned to, to touch in the kitchen as a chef, uh, I mean, from the, the, the cooking school, you know, when we are 14 years old, we like to use the fingers to touch, you know, this is a, a here, it's a blue, medium rare, a point, well done. So this, this little trick still here, you know, still help. We have to use this, you know, when you, when you use your hand, uh, you know if it's enough cook or not enough cook, you know, the texture of the pro product for the fish, for the meat and vegetables. Okay. Then um, yes, you Pascal. have to focus on the side. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm really sorry. We are you now getting out of time. Um, okay. I think it's just a beginning. What the, the idea to have this exchange was just a beginning, and I hope that many chefs and many sommeliers who are affected or not by COVID will go on GCR and GCCR, and uh, we can start uh, something to do this different, uh, really based on the, the experience of the chefs and the sommelier to develop uh, to how to recover the taste. Professor Masha, thank you so much. Pascal, Professor. merci beaucoup. Bonjour Pascal. And uh, Merci beaucoup, oh, yeah. you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, so Thank, Thank you so Take much. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.